future of technology and how it affects youth empowerment, legacy brands, tourism, and social media. Hello, and thank you to Sigma, first and foremost, you know, for organizing a beautiful uh, event and an exhibition. So I would love to call my panel for uh, today. Uh, of course, the, the first one is the owner and the founder of the biggest app in the Philippines, Kumu App, um, none other than James Rumor. The next one is a reality star. Uh, and also, of course, uh, an actor, Aaron Maniego. Guys, energy na coffee ba kayo? <laughs> okay, the next one is a beautiful friend of mine uh, who owns Atinco Perfume, Sabrina Ko. And of course, the last but not the least, um, one of my you know, best friends in the industry, a beauty queen, and of course, best actress. She recently walked for Cannes Film Festival, our beloved Kylie Versosa. Hey guys. So, how are you guys? <laughs> Everything's good? <laughs> okay, so Everything is well. for this panel, of course, we're talking about the future of technology and how it affects youth empowerment, legacy brands, tourism, and social media. But before that, I would love to introduce you all of my you know, panels. Of course, you, you, you've seen them on TV, on, on movies. But I want them to like you know introduce themselves uh, one by one. Of course, starting with James. Magandang uh, hapon, everyone. Kumusta? My name is James Rumor, one of the co-founders and chief uh, community officer of Kumu right now. One of the top leading live stream uh, social media platforms in the Philippines. We started in California and now we have it here in the Philippines. We're turning five years old, so, so that's one special thing I want to share to you guys today. Is Kumu will be five years old next month. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Good morning, guys. My name is Aaron Maniego. I am a TikTok content creator, but because of the many opportunities and blessings in life, I have also turned into an actor and a reality uh, star as well. And I've also been doing commercials ever since. So basically, it's my first two years into show business, and I'm just loving every single opportunity presented to me. And I have some films coming up in August, and I'm just very excited for everything. So thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sabrina, the founder and CEO of Atin, a brand that aims to tell the story of the Philippines not through sight or sound or taste, but actually olfactively. And so we are uh, every day making fragrances that, and products that evoke the best of the Philippines through flora, fruits, and even destinations, and in the hopes of you know, cultivating a new era in Philippine tourism. Hey guys, my name is Kylie Verzosa. I'm an actress, model, I started out as a beauty queen. I founded Mental Health Matters in 2016 and we give light to depression and mental health illnesses in the Philippines. So recently I got into AI, which maybe later we can talk about. So uh, I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited to share with you guys. Thank you, so of course I'm Josh Hugin and your moderator for today. I actually own a Dubai-based magazine called Expedition Magazine, and uh, our, our uh, cover for an annual edition is the Vice President of the Philippines. I think we have a copy over there. You can actually show, Ian. So here you go. She is the, the Vice President of the Philippines, Sara Duterte. And of course, we have covered a lot of stars, including Kaidi, Pia Wurzbach, Catriona Gray, and a lot of international stars. And I also own a PR company, that handles a lot of brands and fashion designers. And we work along with Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande, Mariah Carey, Alicia Keys. And I also own an events company that handles three franchises of Miss Universe. So currently uh, and humbly, we own Miss Universe Bahrain, Miss Universe Pakistan, and Miss Universe Egypt. So 
And you know that we came from different industries and different backgrounds. So my question uh, for everyone is, how does technology affects your industry? Starting, of course, from our tech uh, master, James Schumer. Yes, tech master. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everybody. So, you know, when you think about technology and you think about a topic of youth empowerment within technology, AI included, I think the content platforms really need to uh, invest in AI components due to the fact that you want to moderate your platform in such a way. You don't want a platform, whether it be content creation or actually producing content, you don't want a platform that has uh, bad actors in that that might disrupt your online community. So I believe uh, within, even within Kumu, we use AI now uh, to help moderate what our content is providing to the public. So for example, um, with the um, Philippines being a, a hotbed negative for human trafficking, we have AI practices embedded in, into our, um, our uh, moderation system in order to uh, protect our, our users from bad actors. So I believe that AI is a great force multiplier for moderation and um, how it really represents the, the content in your platform. So for Kumu, uh, in order to defend against the bad actors, we have AI to make sure we scan and look at all the content to make sure we're providing a safe space for all of our users, especially for the youth that use our platform. So as for me, I should be speaking in terms of a content creator. So technology has affected my industry. Well, it hasn't affected. It's founded from technology, right? Social media. That's why I have a career right now is because I, whenever I post videos online, sometimes they get monetized. So there are different forms of income as a content creator. So either monetization from viewership, brand deals, and etc. So many other opportunities. It's in social media that, I, that a lot of people are being um, recognized right now in ways that they haven't been before. So I'm assuming, or I know that five years before, if I did the same thing, I still wouldn't be where I am today. But with social media and with TikTok, it's such an amazing platform, uh, amazing platforms for you to just start out, get yourself out there, and to just simply use technology to your advantage by means of posting videos and honestly with the role of ai and technology right now it's such an amazing thing that for example in tiktok we have these uh filters of you uh, do, uh an ai bot transforming you in, for, into an anime character or ai bots creating actual content for you like uh, captions and copyright and other um other forms of content so it's through AI as well that it, it helps creators like us to be more creative. Because there's, I think there's a disparity between AI being a logical form of thing, but at the same time, having the creativity of a human being, right? But it's through using these different tools, such as, um, I, I forgot it was chatbot AI or... Yeah, yeah. So it was through these apps that it can actually help in honing a content creator's creativity even more for there to be for there to be more content and better content to be produced. So in terms of a content creator, um, if you guys are aspiring content creators as well, which I'm assuming a lot of you are, it's you can utilize AI to your advantage. So it'll help you in increasing your content, your strategy. When it comes to your branding, branding is also very important when it comes to technology since it's such a saturated market, right? So you know, you should know, um, or you need to figure out how you can stand out within this saturated market. So yeah, just have fun with it or um, have fun with it. Don't overthink it and uh, just be the best version of yourself. Thank you, Aaron. Sab? Um, yeah, so essentially there are two sides to the Atten business. We have the B2B and the B2C. In, in our everyday work, we're continuously looking for new and innovative ways to create bespoke fragrances for our partners and clients. Traditionally, we would say, you know, in the fragrance industry, we use century-old techniques 
to find new market trends and create new fragrances. But with the advent of technology, it has opened up new frontiers and endless possibilities with um, market, like finding out consumer behavior and their fragrance um, preferences. And so with the, with the integration of like AI and advanced analytics, uh, we're able to better understand um, the new market trends and as well um, their consumers and their behavioral um, preferences when it comes to the fragrances that they enjoy. When we first started Atten, actually, we were um, very interested in what Filipinos had to think about their fragrances. Uh, we found that Filipinos were really more inclined to like citrusy fragrances, for example, to other parts of the world, maybe in the Middle East. Like where, oud. Like oud, like yes, it. where the preferences are more, you know, towards the ouds and the musks. So again, with all this data, we're able to kind of integrate that and um, find out and use new tools to um, accelerate the process in understanding what our consumers want. Um, so the B2C side of the business, we actually are um, pioneers in the Philippines for scent marketing or otherwise known as olfactory marketing, um, scentscaping, which is basically the approach to leverage the power of scents to um, sort of like enhance uh, an a certain environment or have, um, have these brands create meaningful relationships with their clients through the sense of smell. So I would say um, many important, we use, we have very high uh, tech and high tech scenting machines that we incorporate into large spaces. So we scent small spaces from like 30 square meters to tens of thousands of um, square meters using our intricate um, scenting machines. SMX is actually a client of ours. So we, when you enter the lobby, I hope that you do smell something. But essentially what we do is create bespoke fragrances for brands. In this, brands are able to, again, create meaningful relationships with their consumers. Um, the sense of smell, I believe, is very underestimated in terms of um, marketing. So I think with marketing, uh, people focus initially on the sense of sight or sound. But um, the sense of smell actually uh, is the longest last, makes the longest lasting impression on someone. So in the long term, if you feel like you want to uh, create memorable experiences. I think it's really interesting to delve into the scenting industry and the fragrance industry to try and create these meaningful relationships with one another. Um, one thing we do for brands is that uh, when we do these bespoke fragrances is that we let them know, okay, uh, if you sp spray, for example, or diffuse um, in a specific space, you're able to sort of preliminarily make suggestions in consumers' in consumers' minds. Um, sometimes we can actually uh, d uh, increase dwell time, for example, in a retail space. And dwell time means that there is more opportunity for product exploration. And therefore, um, with the conclusion of them buying more, in the hopes of them buying more. For other people, um, scenting, our scenting machines just enhance the space. So for example, in a um, hotel setting, just adding to that luxury experience allows them to um, have more brand association, brand recognition, and adding an extra element of luxury to that. Um, so I think there's like a vast, uh, there are many ways in which um, our industry has evolved over the years with the integration of like technology. Um, we're constantly using uh, AI to try and figure out, you know, the best ways to create new fragrances, not necessarily through the root of uh, natural fragrances, but also through synthetic fragrances to uh, minimize our carbon footprint. So in this, Atin includes, uh, we have a lot of projects that include a lot of communities where we would like to like uplift lives by providing jobs or um, partnering with certain foundations that help um, feed uh, programs, feeding with feeding programs, and also um, make them sustain their lives. Uh, and I, I'm like really honored actually to be here today because like this is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm learning so much. And with this incredible panel, I'm really inspired uh, by them and with everyone here. Um, ATIN actually is an acronym for Aiming to Inspire Nation because we believe that um, we believe in empowering um, young people and their entrepreneurial pursuits. So again, I'm very thankful to Josh for inviting me here today. Of course. We're thankful to Sigma. Guys, can we give a round of applause to Sigma for, you know, having us today? Thank you, Sigma. Also, uh, I agree with what you said. Innovation is also about all of the senses working. 
And for me, I mean, living in Dubai for 16 years, perfume is very, very important. You know, it, it takes the attention of many people, and it's uh, um, a status for so many, you know, competitive industries as well. So, um, of course, we've seen Kylie in a lot of movies, a lot of films. She's been in the public eye. But what we don't know is she's been very innovative with her scripts, with her, you know, practices. And uh, recently, she got into AI. So, Kylie, can you tell us more about it? So, hey guys, my name is Kylie Verzosa. Some of you may know me, and some of you are probably wondering what I'm doing here. But recently, I got into AI, and it first started because my dad introduced it to me a few years ago. He told me about this program that said that it could help me with work. So I was very, very skeptical about it, like many of you. And he told me to do some research on the AI industry. And quickly enough, ChatGPT exploded onto the scene. Now, this was, ChatGPT was able to do so many different things, analyze so many different things, write literature, write captions. I even used it for some of my captions. But I struggled to see how I could use it in my everyday life, like many of you. And I wanted it to be able to help me with things that I would, that I care about the most. And there were two things that I found I wanted to change here. And one was mental health. So I founded Mental Health Matters in the Philippines during 2016, and we give light to depression and mental health illnesses in the Philippines. But with recent issues, I knew that it was quite a struggle for an AI model to talk about mental health because it was so close and so such a touchy subject for especially the youth here in the Philippines. So another thing is that I wanted to, to connect with my fans more. So I got a lot of messages every day and I want to be able to reply to them because I see how happy it makes them. And so this is where I partnered up with some developers in San Francisco and to create an AI model version of myself that has my voice, my personality, my tone of voice, the way I speak, my taglish, my gay slang, to be able to talk to these kinds of people and to talk to my fans. Now, if some of you don't know me, it may sound a little bit selfish or full of myself, but I am such a fangirl myself. And if I could just speak to, let's say, Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, Sean Penn or Kate Blanchett and ask them for we advice. We met them in Cannes Film Festival. We, I did. <laughs> yes. We met them. And if I could just ask them for advice on anything, let's say my next role or next film, that would be amazing. So in a few months, we're launching this beta model with developers from the US. And so far, it's looking so good. I am so excited to see where it goes. And who knows, we might even be able to touch up uh, subjects on mental health, right? So uh, I'm really, really so excited. And okay, honestly, guys, I had a whole speech ready, but we only have eight minutes. So I tried to memorize as much as I can. And honestly, I'm quite nervous. But yeah, I think it's going to be amazing and great. And I'll be the first one here in the Philippines to have a whole AI model of myself, so well, I'm We love you, Kylie. And, Thank and, you so and much. Knows that. Yeah, I can actually see on screen that we only have seven minutes, but I want this you know, panel to be more interactive. I would give the chance to ask questions to our audience, of course, but first, maybe, you know, uh, James have a question with Aaron, or we all have a question with James, you know, so we can ask, you know, anyone in the panel if you have any questions. Wait, I actually have a question for you. So, Given that you have so many things going on, like having three Miss Universe franchises, being a, a PR uh, agency owner, and being a magazine owner, w so many things, right? What are the things that you do not want to do, and why? Oh, that's a good question. Number one, politics. <laughs> I will never do politics. Uh, I think it's, it's very challenging. And uh, for me, I will never give up. This is one thing that I will never do. Because for me, innovation is not just about um, intensity. You know, I was doing intermittent fasting for the past three months now. So from 95 kg, I just want to share, I, I, I lost like 10 kg. And you know, on my first week of intermittent fasting, I didn't see any results. So I was like, is this really, 
true? Is is my doctor, you know, uh, scamming me or you know, uh, saying what's right for my body? So on the second week, there's no result. On the third week, there's no result. On the fourth week, there's no result. So I almost gave up. But the thing is, like, I I continued. I keep on move. I keep on doing it. And on the second month, I actually, you know, realized that you know I'm. My, my stomach is less now. Don't look at my my, my, my tummy. So and Kylie knows knows about this yeah, the, about here. this struggle. And for me, I realized that you know it's not about you know the intensity that you do have, but it's about consistency. So for me, innovation is about consistency. That you need to actually wake up and do the things that matters to you the most. So, thank, thank you for you. that. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, yeah, do you have any? Maybe I just want to share, let's say, how I use it for my industry. Okay. Let's say acting. So I wanted to test GPT-3 and see how smart it was. So I had to input my script in and I asked it questions like, write a better ending for my script or write a better ending for my character or write a more exciting ending to even asking it questions like, what, char what values do my character value the most? And I was able to use them um, making and creating my character. So just simple things. It's, it's made my life so much easier if you're knowledgeable on how to use it. Did you use it for your uh, baby boy, baby girl ending? No. <laughs> I, that was all my, me. <laughs> because you know, in Amazon Prime, uh, Kylie's movie is number one for five weeks. By the way, so oh, yeah. the baby boy, baby girl. I'm just gonna segue it, yeah. but please watch yeah. on Amazon Prime if you can. <laughs> yeah, with, with Marco Gumabao. And uh, Marco Gumabao's sister is here, by the way, Michelle Gumabao. Let's say hi to Michelle. <laughs> She'll be in the panel. So, uh, yeah, the, the audience can, can ask if questions. If anyone has any questions, yes, we're. Please to James. So, I have a question for Sir James. So, we all know that there's a lot of uh, social live stream apps. So what makes Kumu different from the other social, social media apps? Uh, number one, Kumu live streaming app is different than all the other streaming apps because we're Puro Filipino, right? Our app is all Filipino co-founders and we were born and raised in California, but we moved to the Philipp uh, Philippines to start the app. And within the Kumu app, you see we're very Filipino centric. And the whole point of Kumu is to provide a live streaming app distinctly, specifically for the Filipinos in Kababayan around the world. So now the next, variation of Kumu, you'll start seeing us doing things offline. So uh, when I mentioned um, to Kylie earlier that we're expanding outside of the online world to go offline, such as uh, Kumu Thailand, Kumu Dubai, Kumu USA, we already have events in certain places. Um, and then that's what we wish to provide entertainment and a, and a platform to connect Filipinos around the world. That, was, that makes us different than the other uh, live streaming apps that are operating in the Philippines is that we're really um, harder and, and empower the Filipinos that use our app. And if you see in our app, our virtual gifts is Lechon, Bulong Caballo, you know, Diwata, Halo Halo. So our virtual gifts is very Pinoy centric. Everything that we do, even without outside of Kumu, we have three other apps. And the names are very Filipino. Ube, Type Kita, and our other app is PenLab. And with those other apps, such as PenLab, is still harnessing and voicing and empowering the voice of Filipino creators from around the world. That what makes us different from the other apps. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add that you know Kumu has been giving a chance to like you know a lot of uh, startups, young people, and also they partner up with Expedition Magazine. Maybe we can talk about it, James. Yeah, uh, currently right now, um, because of Josh and I's relationship as friends, we developed a business partnership, and this business partnership, uh, such as uh, mega stars that have been on the cover of Expedition Magazine, such as Kali Versosa and um, Pia and, and Katriona. Um, Expedition Magazine is having a campaign for Kumu users to be on the cover of this um, famous magazine, right? So it's an awesome chance to see regular users who have the ability to have a financial success on Kumu be um, on the cover of this magazine, and which most of our creators only strive to be um, to see themselves on a magazine, let alone Expedition Magazine. So I really appreciate you, Josh, for giving our users that chance of platform. It's your honor. You can be covers, you know, of magazines as well. So please join Kumu and sign up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, would, I would love to actually, you know, bring Miss Universe Bahrain to Kumu for sure, so. Uh, I think we can take one more question. Yeah. 
Hello, good afternoon. I'm Armin Adina from the Philippine Daily Inquirer. I have a question for Kylie Versosa. Have you tried engaging with your AI model, uh, posing as a fan yourself, and can you share with us the experience? So I got the beta version a few weeks ago. It sounded, we could still do a few improvements on it. We could still deepen its Tagalog. Its pitch was a little bit higher. It spoke a little bit faster than I did. The Tagalog wasn't so Tagalog enough the way I wanted it to. But it's going to take some time because I'm the first girl in Asia that's going to be able to do it. And in the whole Southeast Asia, yes po. So it could still use a bit of improvement, but we've been um, in talks with them for the past month. So I think the next version is going to come in the next week or so, but it's starting to look good. And for me, I just wanted to connect with my fans more and all the profits will go to Mental Health Matters after. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, any questions? Yeah, okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Christina. So my question is, you were talking about creating characters with AI and so on. And my question is, how do you think that this will affect youth and teenagers? Because I think that they are very um, tied with, like, they want to look like the uh, people they are seeing on social media. So uh, they are seeing perfection. So an AI ca a char a character will uh, show more perfect than they are showing in their re real life. So uh, my question is, how do you think that they will be affected by this perfection created by AI? Can I answer that? So I think that's been the situation where the youth and teenagers and young people have been comparing themselves to other people, have been going on for a very long time. That's happening in social media right now when you see a post. When I look at Kylie Versos' post and I think to myself, why is my waistline not 18? Right? Uh, no. So this, compa <laughs> this compa quote-unquote comparison towards your, your real self and towards this quote-unquote ideal self has been already going on for, the quite, for quite a long time. But I think with the transition towards AI is that maybe the youth will be able to see them as more as characters the way um, people see video game characters, right? I don't necessarily want to be like um, Thor, but I just appreciate the aesthetic of it. But there will always there will always be this form of relatability towards maybe the story of the character, towards maybe what the character is going through. For example, me as a content creator, whenever I see um, a character on uh, social media, which I I also play a character on social media in a way but it doesn't really define my real self. And the way I can integrate my real self is by adding bits and pieces of content where I'm just simply talking. So it's not purely the form of having an AI character will suddenly make me want to be like the AI character, but it's more on me appreciating the transcendence of, the transcendence of technology and how, uh, how content can be created and pursued at a different angle compared to how we did it before. So yeah. Maybe just to add to it, let's say my AI model. I, I honestly don't want her to be perfect because I'm not perfect, you know? And before entering this model, they had to ask me a list of 20 to 30 questions. Let's say, how do you handle challenges? Or what made you last cry? Or what made you laugh? And I didn't answer them so perfectly. I wanted it to be as human as possible because I'm like that. I'm not perfect, you know? So. Maybe it depends per AI model, but when I don't want mine to be perfect, so I think it also depends on each model and each AI, but I don't think AI should be a perfect being or any agree on that. model should be perfect. So, yeah. I think there's no such thing as perfection, so I, I completely agree with that. So, for me, I just want to add that if those audience wants to look up with someone, uh, to someone, or to idolize uh, someone, they just need to take a risk. Because you know, you cannot cross the ocean unless you forget the beauty of the shore. So you just need to take a risk, try, and if you fail, you stand up again. You know, and um, for me, that's, that's, that's actually, I agree with you, like, that you don't need to be perfect. 
James? Yeah, to close out too with AI, I also think that AI could also be a, a positive thing for the youth. Some people might say they might hide behind a character or uh, uh, an image, but also there's a lot of introverted youth out there that don't have a chance to public speak. So going with a character uh, as a tool from AI, it gives the, the youth um, confidence to get public speaking, right? Confidence to put themselves out there. Confidence to try, like what Josh said. So AI could actually be a first multiplier for the youth uh, in order to find themselves. Because in this world, all the youth are online anyways, but now with AI and able to create a, an alternate character, so to speak, they're able to get confidence from that alternate character that can help translate into the real world. Because if they don't have a chance to speak online with through a character, um, they might not have a chance to have a public speaking platform. For now, AI offers that for the youth. So I look at it as another tool for them to, to discover themselves. And especially like even when, uh, for example, MMORPGs, like you can make a community out of that, yes. right? You can make friendships aside from being this certain character. So I, I think it's not much of being a fake, uh, of faking an identity. It's rather than honing uh, an, an aspect of yourself and gaining something out of it. Oh,